Mark Griffith here and today we're going to use a small command line program called FFmpeg and we're going to use it to make an image sequence into a movie. Now this program is free, it's open source, it's very powerful and it works on Windows, Mac and Linux as well. So you can download a version for whatever computer you're using. Okay, so first thing you need to do is install FFmpeg. I do have an article on this and maybe a video in the future, so I'll link to that now. And basically, you want to open up um, a terminal and navigate to this folder where your image files are. This is once FFmpeg is installed. So we'll run terminal. Your terminal session may show up as white. I've just um, changed some settings here so it's black, but yours may be white. Now, typically, ls is to list um, the contents of the directory that you're in. We're in the home directory. Change directory, cd, and we want to go to pictures. If you're not used to it, it's a little bit slow. ls again, show us what's there. Um, I put this in a folder called time lapses in pictures, and I called it... Um, yeah. Also, if you press the tab key, you just start typing and then press the tab, it'll auto-complete it for you, which can really save some time. Okay, so we have our image images there. Um, a whole load of them. They don't overlap, so that's another story if they overlap. This is just a simple case. So we're going from um, image 1, 2, 3, 3, all the way through to 4, 1, 3, 9. Now I do have a corresponding article which we are following along with here, okay? So if you want to go back to this and you don't want to watch the whole video again, just go and have a look at the article and it's got all the commands there. You can cut and paste and all that sort of thing. Alright, so back to our command line. Now, first make sure FFmpeg is installed properly and it's all working, so you should just be able to type FFmpeg and it will show you the uh, version number there. Um, should run fine. Okay, so we want to do, I'll explain it as we go along, FFmpeg and we're going to tell it with a dash R option, this will tell it the frames per second that we want to generate our file to. Then we do a dash F and we type image 2. That tells it to look for files, look for a list of image files. We're going to specify a start number. Um, in this case, our start number, if we just scroll up here, uh, the first image was 1233. Okay, so that's the number of the first one, so we're going to put that in. Now we do a dash I, and this specifies the image file name or the uh, the wildcard if you like it or the pattern so we've got img underscore and then we're going to type percent zero four d now that percent zero four d basically says um, numbers such that are four digits wide and they're integers counting up okay we already specified the start number which is one two three zero and the percent four zero d will substitute one two three zero and then the next file it'll substitute um, one two three one etc and then dot and then jpg this is case sensitive so make sure you get the case right there now our next option we're going to do a vf and we're going to do some cropping now these images they're straight out of the camera they're 5184 pixels wide and 3456 pixels high now what we want to do we want to um, make these straight into a movie that is basically 1920 by 1080 which is um, our HD footage. Likewise you can use similar methods to do to do 4K as well but we are going to um, do HD. Now we'll go to the notebook just quickly. So just say our image is like this and we've got 5184 by 3 four five six now 
we're going to be cropping it a little bit. So FFmpeg can do crops and resizes. We're going to do the cropping first. So we, we want this section here and we want the ratio to be 16 to 9. So uh, basically we have to calculate what this new height is going to be. We're going to do Five one eight four multiplied by nine divided by sixteen, and that will give us two nine one six. So two nine one six there. Now we want to find out how much we're going to crop top and bottom here and here. And to calculate that, we do our three four five six our height over here minus two nine one six all divided by two and that will give us 270 pixels. Okay, so now we have enough information to specify our crop that we're going to do on the image. Now the crop, basically it's got a few arguments. So first we type crop equals, Now the first two numbers are the actual size of the crop. Now it's going to be the same width as our original, which is 5184, and it's going to be 2916 high, Okay, and the crop is going to start, we're going to specify the X and Y position from the top left hand corner and that will be 0, another colon there, and then 0, and then 270 pixels down and that will give us our crop the way we want it. Now we can do our scaling after that, we do a comma and we type scale equals 1920 and a colon and one. Now you can also just do a scale and, and make it as a negative one and then you'll get something that's 1920 pixels wide but it's still a bit higher than your normal 1080 and that's also quite useful if you want to throw it into your video editing software. Um, we've already calculated the aspect ratio correctly so we can leave that negative one there and this will work fine. Now we're going to specify what codec we want to use. Um, FFmpeg is capable of ver uh, a lot of different codecs. It is a bit tricky to know all the settings, but I generally use the um, ProRes codec, which is the codec of choice if you're going to put it into any sort of Apple video editing software. Um, Final Cut Pro and I guess iMovie as well has got the same backend. So we do a codec V, then we type ProRes. Uh, and then we go a dash profile a colon V and then a number 2 and that tells us to use there's there's a number of preset profiles and the V2 is just the normal 422 um, ProRes. I think if you do a V3 it's an even higher quality one and if you do V1 that's the LT but we're going to do um, V2 and then um, I'm going to do a dot dot and a slash that tells us to save this is for the output file to save our output well I'm going to call it 12 millimeter Rio Ver Verde dot MOV um, to our to the parent directory just so it doesn't get hidden in amongst all the images there now another useful um, tip we're just going to go back and insert a little option here. Now this is ready to go and it will generate our file, but there's the, our um, new video file, but there's quite a lot of files there. So we don't want to go um, and do this straight away. We want to just check that all our settings are right because we're going to be waiting a long while if we want to do that. So if we put in here, if we put a dash T and then a zero, a colon, a zero, a colon, that's um, zero hours, zero minutes and two seconds. If we do that, it'll just use enough images to make the first two seconds of the video, which in our case is 60 frames. Um, all right, let's give that a go. Um, we'll just put, just to make sure, we'll put preview there and press enter. All right, I made a typo there somewhere. So we'll go back. What was it? Um, instead of dash I, I didn't put, I put I dash. So make that a dash I. You'll be able to cut and paste these from my um, from my website, by the way. 
Now you may have noticed there of what I did was I, I pressed the up arrow and that brings back my last my last typed in command. So you don't have to type these in every single time and it is, really is a massive time saver for you. Okay, so try that again. Um, that file already exists. Yes, we want to override it because it actually started writing it before when that, that command failed. So we want to overwrite that and away it goes. So what you're seeing here is the frame that it's up to, how many frames per second it is generating the file at. So it gives you an idea of sort of how long it's going to take. This is not real time, um, 4.5, and then you get a bit rate there as well. Okay, so that's done. And we can go back to our folder, and because I specified for it to go in the previous directory, here it is. So that looks great. It looks like our crop has all worked and everything. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go and delete that dash T option there. And we'll take away that preview bit and this will write the whole file. Um, by the way, important the extension MOV tells it to put it in QuickTime format, um, particularly if you're doing any sort of Apple editing. Now ProRes 4.2.2 is um, it's my standard. I think it's a bit of an industry standard as well, but it is um, it's a codec which is optimized for editing. It's not compressed so much. It's compressed a little bit, but it's not compressed so much that it uh, you have to decode it in order to, order to apply filters and stuff when you're editing. So you will find using ProRes 4.2.2 uh, a lot better. Right. So let's press enter and we'll let that go. And while we do that, actually just for a benchmark, another before any command, I, I just canceled that. I press control C. So if you've never used that, you use control T C to cancel. And I'm going to type time in front of this, just so I can time how long this process actually takes. Okay. Um, and we'll run that again. And yes, we want to overwrite that file because it started generating it before. And we let it go. So let's let this go and we'll see how long it takes. I'll fast forward this. Worth saying as well that this is a multi-threaded application so it will use multiple threads. So it will take advantage of your quad core or eight core or your fancy processor, which really does make a difference. Like when you have a quad core or an eight core processor and you're just using a single threaded application, um, you know, this can take eight. This can make things happen eight times faster than if you were using an application that wasn't compiled to use multiple threads. Okay, so we're finished, and that took us uh, 12 minutes. And let's go and have a look at the file itself. Uh, there we go. It's 2.49 gigabytes and duration of one minute and 37 seconds. Let's watch it. Now you'll notice that the colors I'm using to make this time lapse are really uh, quite flat, okay? And I'll be able to change the um, contrast, bring the increase the contrast there and bring the saturation up a bit to make it look a bit better. So this is using the uh, Technicolor sign style or a flat profile, which is um, something that you may use if you do video work. Oh, that you can actually see something crawling a lot along the um, rock there that I was just sitting on. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, so uh, what I may do, I'll, I'll pick the best bits, probably just here where I'm sitting with the dogs. So that's probably the coolest bit of the whole time lapse. And um, yeah, we'll we'll um, leave it at that. Now, before editing, there's we may want to do another version. So this is a 10, 1920 by 1080p version. Now you may want to do a full uh, a full 4K or 5K version, and w again we can do that in FFmpeg. Um, we'll just bring up that last command, and we'll edit that last com command. I'm just going to call this 5K. And what I've found, we're not going to do any cropping, so we'll delete that crop bit, and on the scale I'm going to put. 5,008 pixels. Now I could 
do the full width of the image here but I've found that FFmpeg has a small bug in it and any width higher than 5008 pixels it tends to crash it's not very good at the really big stuff I guess no one's really used it in anger at, at high resolutions anyway let's um, let this one go this one will it doesn't have to do resizing so I'm not sure if this is going to take longer or not but we've got that time thing in there and we can compare if it takes longer but it certainly will be a lot bigger let's go okay so that's finished and it took just under a, just under 20 minutes there to finish that and we'll have a look at the uh, the file size it's 20 gigabytes now um, even if you're if you're doing 4k footage you can um, you'll be able to pan a little bit in our case we've got this vignetting in the corners there um, but it's certainly good to put it into your video editing software even if you're doing 1080p because then you, d you can do sort of pans and zooms within the video editing software itself now looking at um, playing them back such large video files you really need a computer with the performance and the screen size as well to play these back um, my computer certainly does not have the performance to play it back in real time it's skipping frames and stuff there so you don't really get a good idea of what the time lapse is going to look look like so that's why it's a good idea to do that little 1080p one which takes a little bit quicker anyway okay so for more information on FFmpeg and using it to create um, movies out of image sequences have a look on my website I've got a page on on that exact subject and I'll be doing a couple of other videos on making um, movies out of image sequences for a few other different types of software as well so links to those below cheers thanks for watching